So how was your Valentine's Day, Jerry? Yeah, so for those of you out there, Jerry went out on this, you know, very romantic getaway in Niagara Falls, which oh, is... Oh, you did? You, you asked for time off, and that's what you did. You he he bought, like, you know, stuff, yeah. right? Flowers, chocolates. chocolates. Flowers, the, the Can anybody hear you, by the way? I don't know. Speak louder. Barely. Speak Barely. louder. Yeah. Well, they so, can't see his face. They can't see it. So we could just be making this stuff up. We're just right. adding this. So, so speak louder. What happened? So we get there. Everything was good that night. You know, like we got takeout and everything. We drank a lot, actually. And then in the morning, because the room's got a view, right? And then when the parking, when I went to park the car, when I got there, the guy told me we're out of indoor parking. You're going to have to park off site. And then so I'm like, okay. And he so he gives me direction. And I go, I, I take the directions and I go. And it's like, it's like a motel, it's like a motel parking lot. And I'm like, Okay, this is a little weird. So I, I, I walk back to the hotel, and then I ask them. I'm like, it's, it's a motel parking lot, right? The guy's like, yeah, yeah, no, you should be good. You should be good. I'm like, okay. And then, so that, 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 you know, that, that was probably my first mistake. I wake up in the morning, and I look at the parking lot. I don't see my car. And I'm freaking out. I'm like, holy shit, did I lock the car? Did somebody steal it? You know, and then I walk over there, and then the guy's like, oh, you have the Mercedes? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, it was told. So basically... The guy gave me the wrong, or the guy gave me wrong directions, and I parked in a place I shouldn't have. And then my car got towed in the morning. I had to pay two hundred bucks. Wow. So the, the whole morning was like frantic. Like I didn't even get the chance to shower because when I woke up, I just saw the thing. I'm like, holy shit! I almost ran to the motel, and then the guy was like, yeah, it was told, and then we had to take an Uber to the towing company. And then yeah, I was worried because it's an all-wheel drive car, and I'm like, you know, like, are you, do you guys tow it properly and everything? Did the hotel reimburse you? No, they're like, no, you parked in the wrong spot. They're, so they're like, we're just not going to charge you for the parking, but then we, we can't do anything about the towing costs. Oh, that's well, you know, you go on to Yelp or whatever it is, TripAdvisor, yeah, <laughs> and give them the zero star. Yeah, give them one star. Each. One star? It should just be negative. Know, if maybe there wasn't a zero star option. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. So, uh, Other than that, it was nice. You know, on the way back, we stopped at Niagara on the lake, and then uh, we went to Burlington for lunch. Besides being stressed out, though. Yeah, afterwards it was fine. After, after we calmed down. But Burlington is super nice. Though. Like, we were, like, thinking about, like, what if we move there? Like, What's in so Burlington? Nice. But, like, you know, you know that on the lake? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Like, Anywhere on the lake is it nice. Was real, like, it was so, wait, 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 wait. But more importantly, did your car get damaged? No, not that I could tell. The dash didn't throw any set errors or anything, and it was driving fine. Well, you're very lucky, Jerry, because I... I've had the car so you know, like told before in the yeah. past, and just, I've always had it damaged. I thought it was I thought it was stolen. Like I, I, well, I was so so scared. Because you're like you're in, you're in a place, like I'm not really familiar with Niagara like that, and like you you know in the middle of nowhere, and like your car's gone. See what it is, you know, Adrian, to be like what 25, 26? Yeah, 26. and driving a much too expensive car. <laughs> you worry. I used to worry when I when I when I walked out of a, like a restaurant and I didn't see my golf, which was like nothing. It's weird. I never I never worried. I never did. Regardless of what I drove, I never. Well, we didn't have Uber back then. It was like. Yeah. No. I, it didn't matter what I drove. I never worried about the car. It, but it's still like you're in the middle of nowhere. You're stuck there. You know, no car. Good thing you have Uber. Yeah. It's okay. Well, I guess we should get started because we have a delivery to do today. <laughs> it's okay. It's the Jerry Show. That's right. Coming it's to you uh, on 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 video delay from the depths of audio excellence. <laughs> Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada, Philip, and Jerry behind the camera telling us about his misfortune during uh, uh, Valentine's Day. At least he had a Valentine's Day. This is true. <laughs> so is your relationship now better or not as good? It should be better. Good, because those are usually like, <laughs> usually those moments are like one of those, you know, pivotal ones, right? Where it's like, it was good. It was good. good. 
Well, did you did you propose? Is that is no, that the no, reason no. why? Maybe next year, not this year. <laughs> I already said to him that he should because you know. Yeah, who else is gonna take you? Who else is gonna take you? Who else is gonna put up with your shit? <laughs> Yeah, good. Look, he married like basically the first woman who said yes. That's so. right. And I asked, believe me. <laughs> you know, the old story about, uh, you know, anybody can uh, can hook up. You just have to ask enough. So you go yes, to the bar. Yes, the just one out asking. of the hundred times. Yes. <laughs> I've only asked 99 women, so I've never. You didn't go to the hundredth. No, uh, no, I never. I never, I never went one that one route. <laughs> I never, I never went that route. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, we're we're um, we're taping this today. It's it's a crazy. We, well, we, a third of the U.S. has got no power, or is like experiencing freezing temperatures that are record setting. Yeah, I hear there's snow in we Texas. A, yeah, we got blanketed by snow uh, today, and uh, Jerry and I after this we have to go do a big delivery. So uh, cross our fingers. Hopefully, well, they have plowed sort of. It yeah. was. Well, after the highway, you still have to go into the secondary road. Well, so Warden, Warden Avenue was fine. And then I drove on to uh, Alden, which is our street here. And it was just, uh, there was like a lot of snow. So It's and supposed to snow again, was it Friday? Today's Tuesday. It so is winter. Yeah. Well, we've thankfully had Very a fairly, fairly mild winter. So I guess we were due. I mean, you know, you know what? I know what the temperature is every morning. So up in Stouffville... It's been lo- as low as five degrees Fahrenheit for Fahrenheit. For I don't. That I don't cold? like that. I don't like the. I don't like to measure in Celsius. So yeah, five. Sometimes. So what happens? It's really weird. In my driveway, it's like five degrees. I start driving. I'm out on the street. It's seven degrees. So that's about uh, being about as cold as it has been. And this morning was nine. Hmm. So that's still pretty cold, but not as cold as it could be. So it's not like below zero. Well, the first year. We moved to this location. Yep. This is an interesting story. I don't know if I've ever told it. Um, we had, when we when we signed the lease here, we were allowed a month to um, renovate. So that was December. Uh, and then January, we officially started business. So all of the month of December, it was crazy because, you know, the month of December, trades are taking off. They're not going to be working anymore. Mm-hmm. We had a really hard time looking for trades, finding trades, people who could do the renovation. And that's why... Uh, the first two, three years, we didn't do that much. Anyway, um, we got as much as we could done. Christmas Eve, uh, um, obviously, uh, every you know everybody shut down. Christmas Day, I came in. I don't know why I did, but I did. I came in, and I realized there was something wrong. There was no heat. The place is freezing, and outside... It was um, minus 25, and that's not the windshield, minus 25 Celsius. So that's very, very, very cold. That's that's below zero Fahrenheit. Right. That's really, really cold. It's freezing. The, the heater system had died. So I contacted the landlord, and the landlord called out the uh, HVAC people. They came out. They basically said, not much we can do. We need parts. So... Um, uh, um, So basically, we have two heaters in this unit. So the back heater was working. So we turned the heater on, and hopefully it would um, warm up the place enough so that the pipes wouldn't burst. So for the next two, three days, that's all we could do is use one heater for the entire unit. It's a big enough unit that it never warmed enough. Finally got the heater to work sort of, but that heater constantly gave us trouble. So eventually was... uh, Replaced it was replaced a couple, yeah. couple of years ago. It's still not working properly. It's a brand new unit. Crazy. Mm. Anyway, today, um, you guys can fast forward it and, and, and Jerry will put a timestamp on it. So in case you want to fast forward all this nonsense. Hey, everything just, we say is important. You should yeah. listen to all of it. We're going to talk about the new Macintosh MI254 amplifier. So let me tell you the backstory behind it. I wasn't really going to order this unit for display. Until I begged Adrian yeah. to order well, one. Well, let me, let me tell the story. Um, when, when it was introduced a few months ago, I looked at the specs and I said, it's Class D, it's, it's, it's designed not just for audio, but also for multi-channel. So if you have um, a music system throughout the house, you can use one of these amplifiers, or you can use it for a home theater setup. And <clears throat> it's Class D. And, and although I've, I've had fairly good experiences with Class D in the past. I've never been all that crazy about most of the Class Ds I've heard. In fact, 
except for maybe one. Um, so I wasn't going to order one for display. We would use it for custom work that uh, we, we do. And then about a couple of weeks ago, Philip says, I've got an idea for a topic for, for one of our videos. I said, what's that? But you got to buy it. I said, okay. It says, the Macintosh MI254. And I go, uh, he says, no, I really am interested. And it's Class D. And Philip, uh, some of you may not know, but Philip himself owns Class DMs, among others. And uh, he's had a lot of experience among Class DMs as well. So I said, fine, we'll order it. And I thought, okay, it probably won't show up for a couple of months. So it shows up. I was surprised. Well, in fact, uh, we had ordered before this one, we ordered an MI258 for one of my really good clients. And yes. it's still not here yet. Yes. Yeah, for some, for some reason, this one, I guess they had it in stock, so they shipped it. So let me give you the specs on this amplifier. It's um, 17 and a half inches wide, 5 inches high, 21 inches deep or 44.45 centimeters wide, 11 inches, 11 centimeters high, 53.3 centimeters deep, 40 pounds, 250 watts per channel into 8 ohms, 300 into 4. It's a 4-channel amplifier. So, uh, as I said earlier, you can use it um, in a um, home theater setup, or you can use it to power uh, a music throughout the house system. You can also use it to buy a uh, pair of speakers. It's Class D, but um, the factory does not clarify what um, Class D module it's using. If we get, uh, if we get, uh, well, if I had more time, enough, I would, I would take it apart, and yeah. it'd be pretty easy to tell. Yeah. Um, by the way, you should know. Um, you shouldn't take. Um, you I'm an industry professional. I'm no, licensed. It's not, just, it's not just that. It may void your warranty. So, mm. so. Do not do as Yeah, we Scott, do. we didn't do anything to the unit, okay? Yeah. Do what we say. Do not do what we do. Um, and it's uh, 4500 US dollars. Okay, Philip, since you wanted me to buy this, what did you think? Uh, do I have to be honest about it? Yes. So... Um, if you say I hate it, then you're going to have to buy it because you forced me to buy it. Okay, so I'll give you some background on this. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I want to own a modern Macintosh amplifier. And quite frankly, uh, the one I like, the 462, is uh, prohibitively expensive. That is, I probably cannot have one anytime soon. And I haven't seen any, any super deals. <clears throat> so when this thing came out, I thought, oh, wow, this looks very cool because it's low profile, which means you can stack it with a, a Macintosh preamp, which I have. I have a 2200, which has balanced out. <clears throat> so this thing has balanced in. So I thought, whoa, well, that would, you know, as long as it sounded like Macintosh. So this is my big interest in it. Um, it has meters. Um, it, I know it'll run cool because it's Class D. I know it'll be... Uh, energy efficient, which, you know, for my liberal leaning kind of uh, tree hugging ways is a good thing. So, <clears throat> and then I, I kept on looking for reviews of it to find out what other people thought, anybody that I would have respected, uh, which are, you know, most of the people who take the time and effort, and there were no reviews. So that's why I thought it would be a good idea for us to try it out. And I know we already sold one to one of your clients. And I believe it could be a product for a lot of people who want to get the Macintosh sound, but, you know, want to keep the budget a little bit more um, friendly. And so when I first heard it, I hated it. <laughs> okay, that's just a joke. I, <laughs> no, I didn't like it that much. Um, we plugged it in, Jerry and I plugged it in on Tuesday night. So this is now a week later. And it was terrible. As most amps are, when you first uh, connect them and power them up and listen to them. And over the course of the next three days, it improved quite a bit. So we got about, I would say, 75 hours when I first gave it a really good listening. And first first impression is pretty simple. It's a, it's a Macintosh. It sounds like a Macintosh. It's plain. It sounds, they've voiced it correctly to uh, the Macintosh standard. So it's pretty smooth. Um, it's a, it's a, it's fairly relaxed for a class D design. It, it's not, I wouldn't say it's relaxed, but it's more relaxed than most class D amps I've heard. Um, 
So just as a bit of a background, I have, when I worked with George Tordai, he built an amp. He, he really liked Class D topology, and we, we ended up, well, I was part of the process. We ended up making an amplifier that used a Pascal module, which I believe is fairly popular. It's, it's considered one of the most musical sounding Class D modules you can buy. And I've had that amp in and out of the store, and I've compared it to the 465, well, f no, 452, not the 462. Uh, and I thought it was going to be great, Class D, lots of control, and the Mac smoked it. Now, you know, the, the Mac, Macintosh was a lot more expensive, and like I said, uh, I, I cannot afford to buy that amp. It's just a bit beyond my means. Um, but I still have this Class D amp with the Pascal module, so I listen to it a lot. I had it at I have it at home. I have it hooked up in my video system, so it was on all the time. Um, and when I listen to this amp, there are some striking similarities. Um, besides the overall kind of Macintosh-like uh, sound of the unit, there are some things that you hear about it that are quite Class D. So it's a, it's quite energetic, so that's why I say it's not totally relaxed. It does have some jump to it. There's, 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 there's a bit of this hop to it. Um, now, I believe that what I heard in the upper mid-range is something that will eventually disappear from the amp as it, as it gets more hours. Um, so there's a little bit of glariness, but I heard the same glariness in the amp that I currently own. Um, uh, but it, so here's the strange thing: I, I originally, when I when I hooked it up, I hooked it up to the Sasha DAWs, and so I could hear everything, like every every problem the amp had, I could hear it. It oh, everything I liked about, it, I could hear it. Like it was, I was very surprised that I was able to hear so many nuances in the amplifier. It didn't really seem to have um, any issues with most of the things that we would consider to be musical. So it did all those things. Where it had some problems were things like uh, you listen to symphonic music. It does. It doesn't really separate everything. So it's more like a wall of sound. But that could partly be due to the fact that we only got 75 hours on it. So um, here's the strange part. I decided, well, that's a $50,000 Canadian, Canadian dollar speaker, $37,000, $38,000 US speaker. I got to try it with something a little bit less expensive. So I hooked up um, Soneto, a pair of Soneto ones. So that goes all the way right down to like, you know. <laughs> the extreme. The extreme. The other opposite. The other opposite, like the least expensive, one of the least expensive speakers we sell. And um, there were problems. There was like too much energy in the speaker now. So what's nice about this amp is that it's very smooth and has really good bass, like really good bass, like beyond what you would think you would get from something of this price range. It might even be better than um, the 312 in my opinion. It's very rich and full and dynamic. Um, with lots of force behind it. So it was actually overpowering the Soneto. I had to, because we were using the C53 as, or I was using the C53 as the preamp, I had to use the tone controls and actually turn down 25 hertz and the 50 hertz adjustment. And that made all the difference and suddenly the speaker just blossomed. It opened up. The, speaker, the amplifier drove it extremely well. So the, some of the bloat in the bottom end disappeared because obviously the speaker could not handle that much energy going through the cabinet, uh, which goes to show you that certain speakers, um, they try to, well, in the Soneto, it's not going to be as good as the Olympica. Uh, the cabinet is not the same. And that's very evident with this amplifier, which I was very surprised to find out that this amplifier could do something like that, where it could put out that level of energy into, into a, a, a dynamic speaker. Um, so here I'm listening, I'm going like, oh, this is pretty good. And obviously all the things that the limitations of the speaker came to the front. In other words, I noticed where it was a little bit less. Still very musical, very uh, uh, harmonized in, in a nice concentrated way. Um, and I thought, well, I got to try something else. And I 
substituted Olympica Nova 1 into the system. So Why that's... Why only use all the bookshelves? Why didn't you use like a floor standing speaker? Because, you know... <laughs> you were too look, lazy to I'm carry I'm too lazy. <laughs> and actually, the Olympica Nova 1 is a really, really good speaker. It's a fantastic speaker. For but I just wondering why you use a bookshelf instead of floor standing speaker. Because they were probably like right outside the door. <laughs> um, and I do really like that speaker a lot. And thinking about the price of it, because in in Canadian dollars with the stand, it's about 11. I guess US, I, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't memorized the US pricing on that. You can do the, the math. Um, and I find that that speaker is actually relatively full range. In other words, you could use it no problem in a fairly you know big room like this room is, and you could run it with any amplifier, and it would have response down low enough for you to enjoy almost any kind of music. And um, so that's what I did. I, I hooked it up, and lo and behold, um, it handled all the energy that the MI254 was putting out to it and I turned off the tone controls and it became even fuller and richer and, and still under control um, and that's how I listened to it for the last hour or so. Uh, I really liked it. I really liked the amp. It just goes to show you that when you're doing these kinds of reviews it's not enough to listen to well, it's, it's more important that you listen to a number of different uh, speakers because it, the amplifier actually sounded quite different in many ways, depending on the speaker. So, you know, the strength of the speaker is not necessarily tied to the strength of the amplifier in, in many, many, many respects because it almost sounded like three different amplifiers, albeit with that smooth Macintosh mid-range, but everything else changed about it depending on what the speaker could do. So, you know, your experience with it will be largely dependent on the speaker that you choose. Um, so overall, did you like it? Yeah, I would buy it. I mean, the form factor is beautiful. And for someone who wants the Macintosh look and um, the sound, it has it. Uh, it might not be quite as refined as, um, I would say, you know, like the 462, but that's a much more expensive amplifier. and it, it, you know, at least uh, with this amplifier, I could actually carry it. I could pick it up. Yeah, I think the 462 is almost double the price in US more than, dollars. More than double. It's nine grand. Well, yeah, double price. Yeah, yeah nine grand yeah. US. Yeah. So um, I'm not saying it is a 462. I'm not even saying it's a 312. But in many respects, uh, you would be more than happy with that amplifier. It's It does the job. Um, I'm surprised that no one's reviewed it. Or maybe a lot of people thought, like me, that this is a Class D amp. It's, f it's, it's um, focused, if you will, or, or uh, seems to be focused towards <clears throat> home theater and you know music distribution. So maybe um, nobody asked for samples. Yeah, maybe. Well, it's, it's because it's fully worthy. Um, I mean, it might be more at the lower end of what Macintosh can offer, obviously because of the price. But it's 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 similar in many respects to like the MA two five two, which is a very sweet sounding amp, not necessarily very powerful, but it has the Macintosh sound. And then you know, obviously, if you go up one to the three five two, that has the full blown Macintosh bookie factor to it. And uh, I'm sure this is similar in that respect. It'll be interesting um, when I talk to my client and when he after he installs the MI one two eight. Uh, Two two five eight, um, how he enjoys that because that's that's just a, like a lower powered version of this. It's got more channels, I think. Eight channels, eight yeah. Channels. And Half I think with that one, you can even bridge them. If you can bridge wrong. them. Yeah. You can so you can run four mono channels at two hundred fifty watts or eight mono channels at one hundred and twenty five yeah. watts. Th per just channel. so you know, th this uh, uh, this amplifier that we're discussing does not allow you to bridge. So you you can run. Um, four different speakers or, or two pairs of speakers simultaneously or you can buy amp them. So the yeah. interesting thing about this amplifier and the way I have it hooked up right now is I have one channel from one pair hooked up and then the other channel from the other pair hooked up. So only one channel for each of the two banks are connected. Uh, in other words, 
The, there's two meters in the front. They're not configurable. The left meter is for the left two channels, and the, the right meter is for the right two channels, which are arranged in a stereo pair. And the output that you see on the meters can be, um, if you have all, all the channels hooked up, it's a, it's a summed uh, um, um, uh, display. display of what's, what's, what's being output from the amp. But even when you use the one channel, so one and one, you get the stereo pair. When Jerry originally hooked it up, he only hooked up the, 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 the two on the right side. So the right, the right pair of, of inputs were hooked up, which have uh, red and white. So that is a stereo pair. And I was only seeing <laughs> one meter, and I thought, well, okay, maybe that might be technically correct, but I want to see both meters both going, meters, so yeah. I changed it. So, you know, that that is one cool thing about it. My intention was if I ended up getting something like this, I would use it to buy amp. That would be pretty cool. Then you have, like, 500 watts. Yeah, and, and by the way, so because we do get quite a few emails about uh, buy amping, you know, the thoughts about buy amping and... Um, I often tell um, people who ask that biamping is not for the faint of heart. If you want to do it properly, uh, you have to make sure that the amps under consideration have similar gains and similar sensitivities. Otherwise, there's no way to adjust for uh, the output level. So, for example, let's say the tube amplifier, let's say, which is very common. People want to use tubes to drive mids and highs, and they want to use solid states to drive bass. But let's say the tubes are more sensitive than the solid state. It now means that for any given voltage, the tube amplifier is going to sound louder through your speakers than the bass amp, which means that oftentimes you're going to listen and you'll think, how come my speakers don't have the kind of bass that I expect? And then if you reverse it, and uh, you'll find that now the tube amplifier driving the bass is much louder. We have three minutes. Okay, so um, point is you can buy amping. I'll, I'll give you a very quick uh, um, summary. Much like uh, Villip, uh, I found it very, very smooth. Um, I didn't find the detail to be as good as um, the, the other Macintosh amplifiers. Uh, the highs were a little bit muted, not quite as airy. Um, very sharp image. I'm going to audio file details because we get questions about that. Soundstage was a bit narrower compared to the traditional Macintosh amps. The soundstage was a bit laid back, so a little bit further back. Very nice layer, but not quite as deep. Uh, as, as Villa pointed out, deep bass, tight and grippy, <laughs> shockingly. Uh, resolution was very good, but not quite to the level that I'm used to. A little bit more muddled and and confused is not the right word, but not quite as distinct. As it's I not used delineated. To. Yes. So Great word. one of the things I noticed about it, when when I had it hooked up to the Sasha DWs and why I wanted to really change the speaker was that oh. in the Wilson position, that speaker, the Sasha, has great depth of soundstage with most good amps, like really great amps that we have here, and I wasn't noticing that as much with yeah. the two five four. So when I put it on with the bookshelves out they were out in front and actually taking that bookshelf to a different spot from the wilson spot opened everything up and created much greater sound stage depth not so much left to right that stayed the same but just front to back and you know again that's that's on the speaker it's not on the amp so the amp is actually capable of resolving it maybe not to the degree that say the 462 yeah. is but it's, it's pretty a, close yeah i mean in summary because we're running out of time summary it's a it's a really good amp much better than i honestly thought it was going to be i i, I um, made the uh, fatal error of judging it before i listened to it and that's why i didn't order it but i'm glad Philip made me order it because <laughs> so, I, I don't have any hesitation recommending it. so you want to hear the funniest part okay yeah one so minute. He, Jer jerry changed everything and and and, and he put in Serafinos, and yeah. he had the 1.25 KWs hooked up. But he didn't tell me he did that. <laughs> and I was walking by the room, and I was thinking, like, man, that amp got really, really, really <laughs> good after a bit more break-in. Yeah. So it was a 1.25 uh, KW. So mm -hmm. there you go. Well, that's it from us. Um, go and check it out. Uh, it's a great amp. And it's a really good value. Adrian from Audio Excellence, like, subscribe, and uh, turn on notification. We'll see you again next time. Uh, Jerry and Philip, bye-bye.